What up, my dudes? Be sure and go follow me up on all this stuff. Add me up on this stuff. Spencer Turley, no space, no capital. You know what it is. Prepare for the liftoff, dog. 20 laps, brap. Let's get it. So I always like to come in here and do a little video on like Daytona with a high amount of laps and the rain mode on about as crazy as you can get, you know, one of these races in the game. Um, I like to come in here just to do this when a new Supercross game comes out, just to kind of test the high amount of laps on a track, terrain deformation, mud mode, the new Daytona. It's kind of like a 10 in one kind of thing going on. What the lag was that? All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little slick, bro, a little slick, okay. Oh, uh, that triple nipple's gonna be a little difficult. Gonna have to take the outside. We got concrete tough blocks, balling. All right, so chilling back here in 28th place. So specifically with this Daytona here, um, just by the way this was, even in real life, it was a lot more of like a jumpy more of a super crossy Daytona, not as much motocross Daytona. So I think that in itself is going to make some people kind of not like this Daytona as much as like the Supercross 2's Daytona or Supercross 1's Daytona. But I think most of that reason is more of the layout of what they were working from more so than them just making a, a worse track. I don't really think it's as much that. I think it's more of just this track in itself was way a lot different than they normally make a Daytona, you know, a lot more jump rhythms, long jump rhythm lane. I mean, even on that super long jump lane over there, you know, where Forkner was quad quad seven, five jumping and all that shit. It was typically those kind of sections are really just more of like a straightaway with a roller or something like that all the way through them or like, you know, little double roller jumps. Typically it's not like really like a full super cross rhythm, fast, long supercross rhythm like that. So that was a little different than the typical, but um, either way, yeah, these are going to be some double, double, double till infinity and beyond lines that I'm going to be hitting here. So apologize for that, but you know, the way she is in the mud. So this is my first time ever riding on the mud mode in this game thus far. Nice to still be able to hit that triple there. So you got the uh, James Stewart huck it to the moon and back jump right here. I like this Daytona in the sense of how contrasty the different dirt colorations are. Thought that definitely brought the track around, made it look pretty cool. Kind of gave it a cool feeling to it. Um, the palm tree placement, right? Some of that really kind of puts you in the feel of it. I did notice in this game they seem to have sort of taken away the... Remember in the first Supercross game and a little bit in the second one? It had a lot of where it had the uh, kind of like splotchy uh, video effect up on the borders of the screen. So it kind of gave you like a, I don't know, it's kind of a weird little vibe to it. Um, that seems to be totally gone in this game, like just completely ripped out of the game. And of course, I think it was a little bit in uh, like MXGP Pro and maybe MXGP 2019. So it seems as if they basically totally taken that out completely. Um, so let me get to the more zoomed out view here. We might go into first person here in a minute too. That old moose scan. Uh, oh, there's a trip ski. All right. Can almost, yeah, you can just, I think you might be able to triple, triple that still through the mud, but just have to hit it a little bit better. Again. All right. You have to be a little careful when you whip over and land a little bit sideways in the mud. So... Yeah, they've always kind of had their mud where, to me personally, I always thought it wasn't quite slick enough. It was always like a little bit more like deeper mud. You never really felt like, just felt like it had more friction to me more than it actually being slicker. But, um, and this is similar, right? This doesn't feel like a lot slicker than some of the other, uh, you know, Supercross games. It's not like, oh my God, you're just going to instantly slide out. But what I will say is just the standard cornering in this game feels a lot less slide out you know that weird milestone bullshit slide out in the corners in every corner that kind of started around like mxgp pro kind of carried over to supercross 2 and then was in mxgp 2019 wasn't really so much in the first supercross game or mxgp 3 but then they kind of got out of hand with the whole sliding in the corner so seems they've kind of uh seems like they've kind of fixed that a little bit here 
a uh, very different cornering system to this game than any previous milestone game. This is kind of uh, kind of got a little of MX or ZV all out, you know what I'm saying? A little smooch of that in it. Uh, so it's got a couple little different things like that going on. But 15 minutes in, Doug. I mean, 15 minutes remaining. Is it what's a? It's like 20 minutes plus two, right? Which of course. In a real life mutter like this, you know, rain just shitting down, that it wouldn't even be that long. It would be like a 250. It'd be like they probably did it like 12 minutes plus a lap or whatever if it was really like this in real life. So, <laughs> but as far as the terrain deformation, basically doing nothing. I mean, the track is not really doing anything as far as changing over time or anything like that, which is okay because in mud it's not really doing a whole lot of that anyway. It's just kind of sloppy sloshing around it ain't really making any hardcore ruts anyways so it's kind of to be expected i'm curious to see how the terrain deformation is on some of the other tracks when you really get in there and run a full main event with a full gate of dudes i'm not sure how it really does that but some cool little water ponds little puddles up the inside on some of these corners kind of cool to see i think they kind of start implementing that in mxgb 2019 that's kind of the way this rain feels right here and looks a um, little more similar to the MXGB 2019 vibe where you're kind of like the faster you're going, the more you can see the rain effect blowing around, you know. So it's kind of got more of that like uh, more, you know, updated modern milestone mud and rain mode, right? Which you do still have the option to just make the track wet. So you've got the full blown, you got clear Full-blown rain mode, wet track, and that's it, pretty sure. So, uh, front of my fender looking a little dirty, boys. Whoa, dude, that, specifically that, coming off of that triple right there, they narrowed the entry to that, those whoops, so hardcore, dog. Like, good God, Milestone. If you don't, if you're not basically in the middle of that triple coming off, then you're going to have to turn super hardcore to the middle to, to dodge those outer tough blocks. I'll explain that better uh, once I get around the next lap. But, <clears throat> oh, yeah, let me just kill those tough blocks out there, dude. Okay. So some of these sections still a little more difficult to hit. But, yeah, you know, it doesn't feel super slick. Definitely a far cry from, like, real-life mud riding in, you know. It's it's just more frictiony than anything. More frictiony than slick, for sure. Um, so, either way. But, yeah, man, having a decent time with this game so far. Actually, quite surprised by a lot of elements of the game. Throwing some whips in first person. First person ain't too bad on here, dude. Not too bad. It was absolute trash in uh, MXGB 2019. I mean, complete shit. I mean, like, how in the hell did they release that? I don't know. But uh, a lot of... See, it's crazy because, like, this is one of the first Milestone games I feel like I've ever played where there's really not that, like, super... Like, how the hell did they release the game like this with this certain thing like this, right? There's really not a whole lot of anything that's given me that sort of feeling. And this is the first time I've ever had that feeling with any new Milestone game before. Like with Supercross 2, it was the weird-ass whips that were completely worse than the first Supercross game. You couldn't pull them back around when Supercross 2 first came out. I was like, what the hell is this? How did this come out like this? And then, of course, they updated it later. But then MXGP, you know, 2019 comes out, and it's the first person is just complete trash. The, you know, loading the start menu screen, all that kind of just blank white, basic, it, the most basic menu screen you could ever have in your life. You know, all these little things about MXGP 2019 is just like, how did the game come out like that? But so far with this Supercross 3 game, there's just not a whole lot. I mean, there's some nitpicky things, obviously, but just like with any game, but there's nothing that's really like super, super standing out as just like a how in the hell did they come out with the game like this, being like this, you know? So that's what's really impressed me about this and feels different than what Milestone has done previously. It's like everything's a little more coherent. Everything's a little more put together to me. It's what it feels like. Um, yes, still need some polish on the physics and the animation and stuff like that, but overall, not 
not too bad. Would have been cool to have seen some uh, some more like pre-made inside ruts on this Daytona track, like not necessarily in the mud mode, but in the dry mode would have been kind of cool to see. Um, I know they have a sick-ass pre-made inside rut on Vegas in the very last corner. That would have been cool to have seen a couple more of those in like the Daytona track and stuff. So they're obviously capable of making pre-made inside ruts. They're just choosing not to do it on a lot of these tracks. So it's an interesting little thought process there, but a little bit of a seat bounce button vibe going on to the game. Uh, not really like a full-blown button for it, but there's definitely a lean back, lean, you know, lean forward, lean back, lean forward type vibe you can get going before some jumps. I hadn't really learned it yet. I hadn't really figured out like what's the best way to do it yet, but we're getting there, so... Yeah, this game's actually like, you know, I'll be playing this game for a certain amount of time. Like, it's fun enough to play for a minute, you know? There's enough deepness, enough stuff to it. Skill gap and um, just, like, filling whips and all this other stuff. There's enough to do and filling to it that feels like I can actually play the game longer than a week without just getting completely bored out of my mind of the game like I was with the first Supercross game and somewhat of the second Supercross game, you know. So either way, we got eight minutes left. I may not, I'll try to run close to the full 20, but we'll see here. So like that right there, you see how narrow they've made those tough blocks at the start of that whoop section? Really bizarre how they did that. I'm not sure why they did that, but... um. Because then it, it widens right back out when it goes to those red tough blocks midways through the whoop section. So, not so sure why they did that. But, um, yeah, this game's just got it's got a little bit of a slower feel vibe to it, right? It's not like the hyper warp speed when you're going five miles an hour like the first Supercross game, which I thought was ridiculous. But, like, that's still some of the reason why a lot of people like that game because it feels like you're going fast when you're really not. I would much rather have a game feeling like you're going slow when you're going slow versus have a game that just feels like you're going fast everywhere. Like, yeah, this game definitely, I feel like, could use a little bit more of that speed element when you get going a little faster. You know, it's lacking just a little bit of that, but it, you know, it certainly doesn't need anything like the first Supercross game was. That was way, way too fast screen movement, you know, speed filling to that game just almost make you motion sick in that first Supercross game with how fast everything was. Um, and it was stupid because it wasn't like skill gap, you know what I mean? Because you you were feeling like you were going fast everywhere, no matter if you were going 5 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour. You felt like you were just going light speed in the first Supercross game. But still, you could overjump something and never wreck, come up short on the worst thing ever and never wreck, literally never pop off. Whoops had literally fucking negative five skill gap to them, literally none, right? So there was just no skill gap to that first Supercross game at all. There was none, dude, actually none. Like if you came up short on a jump like I'm doing right here, just completely botching this rhythm, in the first Supercross game, you would literally lose no speed at all. There was no penalty to anything. Come up short, you know, mess up a rhythm, it doesn't fucking matter. You're still going just as fast. And that's where that inertia in this game comes into play when you start coming up short on shit or just barely jumping something a little bit wrong. You get punished for it. You lose speed for it like it should be. God damn it. Like that's the way it should be. It's like, man, some people just, they just don't get it. And those are the people out there that are, you know, still going on about the first Supercross game being so good. Oh, my God, they just need to go back to the first Supercross game. Those are the guys that want literally no skill gap in their motocross games. They, they don't want any of that. They want their game to feel like they're going light speed when they're going two miles an hour fast. They want to be able to over jump a, a main triple by 500 feet and not pop off. They want to be able to go through whoops that have they're actually literally roller roughness not whoops at all <laughs> i mean though that those are the kind of people that really love that first supercross game that that is literally the most arcade one of the most arcade supercross games i have ever played in my entire life dude it is so arcadey and so easy and so no skill gapped i couldn't even deal with it dude like just got so boring to me so quick but uh either way and obviously when you're riding with the mud it's a not a good uh you know 
representation of being able to hit bigger lines and being able to go faster because everything's got more friction. You got to hit smaller lines and everything. Like when you get on a tr certain tracks this game with not the rain mode on, when it just dry dirt, you can get the scooting and hitting big ass lines and you got to be precise and you got to do all this other stuff. So kind of turns into a whole nother animal, right? When you start getting on that. But either way, five minutes left to go. It's a long moto out here, boys. Just riding my own race. Am I lapping? I don't even know how many dudes I've lapped. Or if I have lapped anybody. Uh. Yeah. Webb's eight seconds back. Daytona mutters are always a hoot, dog. <laughs> that one with fucking... Damn, there's been a few, but... Wasn't there one with Ricky and all them? There's one with Reed, obviously. Reed and Wyndham. Um, seemed like there were, seemed like Villapoto was in a mutter, a, uh, Daytona mutter too. Could be mistaken, but man, I don't know. Like all them races just kind of go together in my head. Man, that was some cool racing though. The past like 20 years of professional supercross and motocross. It's been a hell of a time watching that shit, dude. Been awesome, but in either way. Just trying to get get the last couple laps out of this shit. So any of you new guys to my channel know this uh, making videos on Supergrass 3 is going to probably attract some more new people. Yeah, man, basically uh, just a dude that's pretty into simulators and make a lot of custom tracks, which are all on my front page. Big into the custom track making scene on these motocross games. Um, you know, Pro Racer on MX Simulator. You can go check out my front page and see a lot of that in playlist and stuff like that, but... I'll be covering some more on this game for sure in the next few weeks. I've been making quite a few videos on it because it's actually got some depth to it, got some shit to do in it, so that'll be pretty fun. But, yeah, if uh, not not that kind of guy to be like, hey, hit that subscribe button, hey, do this, do that. Like, obviously, you dudes are smart enough to know how to hit a subscribe button. And it annoys the living shit out of me when YouTubers do that. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe, bruh. Like, ugh, God. I will never, ever tell you to do that, ever. But what I will say, what I will remind you on is if uh, when I'm uploading a lot of videos like this, if you don't have me actually belled on YouTube, like the notification bell turned on, you may not get all my videos like notified to you. So, you know, if you are wanting that, then you can go bell me. But if you don't want that, then that's cool. You don't have to bell me. But YouTube's kind of got a weird system where you got to damn near double subscribe to somebody to really like get all their videos notified to you. So... But either way, two minutes, man. We're just toughing it and roughing it out here, dude. So the track has literally changed basically none. I mean, like, literally, I can't even tell it's really done anything visually different either. You know, fuck it doing something uh, physically on the track. I don't even think it's done anything visually. I literally don't think it's done anything. But either way, it's cool. <coughs> ah, let me cough my head off. Uh, it's cool that some of these bigger main triples, they made them small enough to where you can still hit them in the mud. Because that would have been a little bit annoying not being able to hit those. You would have just had to go really slow. I was kind of wondering why, like in the dry, I was really over jumping some of these main triples on the 450, but it all kind of makes a little more sense now because they're building it around having 250s and having, you know, mud and all that. I think you're going to struggle hitting some of these bigger triples in the mud on a 250. Um, but you should be able to still do it. Should easily, I mean, not easily, but you definitely should still be able to hit the main triples on a 250 in the dry. Right? In the 450, you got to let off a little bit in the dry on the main triples, but basically wide open on the 450s in the mud, and you'll, you'll be able to, you might still be able to clear that main triple right there in the mud on a 250 if you go way outside. Right? But, uh, yeah, dude, one minute left, my voice is going out, let's see if I can make it without getting some, uh, squeaky 14-year-old voice action going on here, dog. <laughs> Been making quite a few videos today, trying to get it going on this game. I know it's important to get all these videos on this going as soon as possible. Get on that relevance page, you know what I'm saying, but, oh, man, you can get going slow through that. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly some elements of skill gap that could be higher in on the mud modes and the Daytona tracks and stuff. Like I was saying, like more inside ruts, making the mud feel a little more like mud, a little more slick, 
you know, certain little things could make it not feel so just like you're on the gas everywhere, kind of zombieing around the track, which this game doesn't really feel like that in the dry, but it does kind of start getting that vibe when you get the mud mode going for sure. So either way, well, that's basically it, boys. Uh, nine minutes left. That was, I don't know if that was exactly 20 laps, but it was 20 minutes, 20 minutes plus a lap. And what the hell lap time are we running? 130. So yeah, it's probably like 18, 19 laps, something like that. So Either way, appreciate you guys watching all the videos. Later, dudes.